remember roasting my first batch of coffee. Um, that's kind of how I started to get into the business. How many of you own your own small business? I see hands. I've talked to someone this morning who started her own business. Sounds like your story was similar to mine. I kind of stumbled into it. Um, a, a few friends and I were just uh, talking one day and we decided we're going to buy a coffee roaster. There wasn't a specialty coffee roastery in Greenville, so we decided to do it. And we really just started it as a hobby for ourselves. And what turned from a hobby, um, it, it turned from being a hobby into something that was uh, more like a business. And one of my business partners actually signed us up for an event, and that pushed us along um, into the process of starting to have to roast and figure out what we're doing. And that first batch of coffee that we had was terrible. <laughs> so um, fortunately, that desire we had for great tasting coffee um, and you know, most of what we grew up on was pretty dark. It had that ashy, burnt flavor um, that, that's so hard to learn to love. Um, we, we thought that we could you know, maybe make something that was similar to other roasteries um, that, that don't roast so dark. And, and we really wanted to do that ourselves. So we kind of moved along uh, towards that. And that first piece of equipment that we bought was, was uh, pretty basic. It only gave us control over how long we roasted, how much coffee we'd put in there. And then we got to decide when to you know, take it out and let it start to cool. So uh, fortunately, the business kind of developed and grew, and we were able to obtain more control of the roasting process, um, which uh, we were able to control how much uh, air is flowing through the roaster, um, the temperature of that flame that's coming to heat the, the bottom of the roaster chamber. And then um, we could also control, uh, or at least monitor the temperature. So overall, with those factors, we're adjusting things on the machine so we can get that ideal bean temperature at the end. So we would we'd set a goal of what we wanted to roast the coffee at, and most coffee has a pretty narrow window for where it's going to taste good. So we, we kind of work towards um, that end goal. And um, over time, that, that process of roasting, it started to become a metaphor for what we eventually went through when we decided to open a coffee shop and roastery. So what started out slow in the roasting process, you know, you, you can't really see what's happening inside the bean, but that temperature continues to rise. Uh, the temperature with our business started to rise um, as it went from something that was just on the side uh, to where we did that first event. And um, that first event kind of pushed us to have to learn how to roast uh, coffee better. Um, What's, what's going on inside coffee as we roast it is, is basically you're starting with a green, unroasted coffee bean. It's sitting there at room temperature, usually around 70 degrees Fahrenheit, and it's gradually increasing. And the end goal is to get it somewhere around 400 degrees. That final ideal temperature really depends on that, that coffee and what, what it's going to taste good at. So, um, but throughout the process, it, you really don't see change. You've heard the, you know, the phrase, a watch pot never boils. The same is true with coffee. There's a little sight glass on the front of our roaster that you, you can look through to see what's going on in there. And basically, all it looks like is a bunch of beans just jumping around. And they start off in that pale green color, and slowly it develops as it increases temperature into like a light yellow color. And then that light yellow, when it's that light yellow color, it kind of smells like hay, so not very, really that appetizing. Um, it continues to, to develop, and it gets into a, more of a light brown color. Around 350 degrees, uh, that light brown color turns into a medium brown, and the gas inside is getting so hot, the pressure builds, and then an explosion happens, similar to what you experience with popcorn in the microwave. Um, that that it, moisture in there explodes out in a process or a stage in the development that's called first crack. So after first crack, around 350 degrees, the ro coffee roaster is, is making adjustments, monitoring what's going on with the temperatures, looking at the exhaust temperature, looking at the bean temperature, adjusting how fast the, the drum is spinning around and around. 
All those adjust adjustments are really important uh, pieces of input because they change the profile that the coffee is going through as far as the, the temperature over a period of time. And um, really that, that last tail end of the process, that's really important. And that's when the coffee turns into the medium to full brown color. Um, hopefully not too black, <laughs> otherwise you're drinking too, too dark a coffee that's probably going to taste a little ashy. Um, so that, that last stage in the process, um, really you, you can see the development, you can see what's happening. It's pretty exciting. The coffee's in there popping, cracking. And um, I, I kind of sit back and think about how we went through opening the coffee shop. Those early days when we were just getting started, um, there was a lot of excitement, you know. We were trying something new and we kind of dove head first into experimenting. And that's kind of like when we bought the, the machine, bought the equipment, um, that, that's similar to how we buy coffee. And then as we moved along in the process, um, we started to see that people were interested. That first event we went to, uh, people in Greenville were asking us, where's your coffee shop at? Where can I buy a bag? Where are you located? Those kind of questions, we hadn't really thought of a physical retail location at that point. This is only a month after we've been roasting. So those, those questions kind of pushed us forward though. It piqued our interest and kept us um, look, looking at what we could become. And over time though, it looked like from the outside that not much happened. We did several more events and we, we kind of honed our, our skills, got better at roasting. We tried different coffees, we're you know, learning everything we could about roasting coffee. And um, once again, from the outside, it looked like nothing was happening. But um, we got to the point where one of my business partners decided to move away. Um, we had applied and, and got a grant from the city to open a, a roastery and coffee shop. And we had our sights set on a few locations. Um, and at that point, I was still working full time as an accountant here at ECU. And, and then that, kind of, that was kind of the turning point for me where I had to dive head first. I had to go into that roast chamber and things started to happen. I saw that progress wasn't going to happen unless I focused all of my time, all my energy into, into pushing it forward. So I left my job and took that big leap that people talk about. Um, and people ask me all the time, how'd you do that? How'd you make that decision? And really, the for a year and a half, I was thinking about making that decision. It, it was a slow process. There was a building to it. And, but once I finally made that decision, it was on. The heat was on. Um, the salary went away. And I was focused on <laughs> what, what, how do I pay my bills and, and open a coffee shop. So I moved forward with that. And, and you know, we, I had one other business partner at the time. So we both were balancing the work of, of roasting and trying to sell coffee. Um, at that point, we're providing coffee wholesale to, to other folks. And um, restaurants started to contact us. And some churches were asking for our coffee, too. So um, some of those early uh, supporters that we got kind of helped us to, to have funding and, and to see that vision for how we could actually develop our business as a coffee roaster. And then eventually, we, we decided to go that route of having a retail coffee shop and with a roastery located in it. So um, just like things heated up with roasting, it started to heat up with preparing and planning out the coffee shop. I started to go through and buy equipment, look at our layout, look at the best layouts, change the layout. I eventually met with architects and we came up with a draft of what it would look like um, in the coffee shop. And you need those plans, of course, to move to the next step to get contractors to put bids in, start that work um, on the shop. And um, all the while that stuff's going on, we're still roasting, still working on developing the business more, developing the concept, and then also um, started demolition on our space. We, if you know the space we're at, um, it used to be a, a place called Campus Cookies, and we tore out the walls that they had put up. Um, they kind of partitioned it to a workspace, and we wanted it to be an open, um, accessible space with plenty of seating. Um, although it's small, we maximized the seating, I think, pretty well. 
and you can see what's going on. You can see us making drinks. You can see what's going on back with the roasting area. So through all that process, we moved forward, um, and then we started to um, we started to look at open dates. Um, the final details of our preparation came together with hiring staff, planning out our menu, finalizing all those little details of decor, um, everything like that. So, um, so really, through that process, we started started to see how this could, you know, tie it back into roasting. How that slow building, those adjustments we had to make along the way, how all that kind of fit together. Now, those outside voices, they, they still were there. Um, we had coming soon signs up. And some of you may remember that if you lived here in Greenville. Um, I remember the first time we posted a picture of the coming soon signs on Facebook, somebody made a comment and said, I hope coming soon really means soon. <laughs> Not like, never. <laughs> so. Um, that that kind of that kind of hit me, and I was like, "That's not fair. We're gonna do this quick." And, and after several delays, we we really didn't open that soon. <laughs> it took about nine months after I left my job, and eventually we did open September 23rd of 2017. And um, but through all that, I, I hope you can kind of understand and see how that could relate to you. Um, when you have those voices that are saying um, there's no progress, they don't understand what you're doing, um, just, just know that, that what's happening inside those coffee beans, that, that temperature that's rising, only you can see, you know what's happening, you can feel it, maybe you have sensors that no one else can tell, um, just like we have sensors on our coffee roaster, you know what's going on. And, from the outside, when you're roasting coffee, it looks like nothing's happening. From 70 degrees to 300, all, all that changes is a pale green turns to a, kind of a pale yellow. It's that last 100 degrees where the most change happens, really the last 25 to 50 degrees. So just keep that in mind and, and think as you're preparing for your next venture, how can coffee roasting be that roadmap for you?